<laughs> but, you know, we're going to start off on a more serious note than we normally do because some news came down in the WNBA that was a little concerning and um, a lot concerning, actually. Right. And yeah. so um, Las Vegas Aces guard Raquana Williams um, has been suspended right now from team activities um, and was charged um, with some domestic violence allegations. The Las Vegas, Vegas Aces put out a statement. They said they were made aware of domestic violence charges against a member of our team, Raquana Williams. As an organization, we condemn domestic violence of any kind. At this time, Raquana Williams will be precluded from participating in team activities. Our thoughts are with the parties involved in this situation. We are currently gathering more information. And as such, we will not have further comments at this time. So that statement was issued on Wednesday. Um, and lots of discussion started to happen and um, to help us with this, this topic and, and, and what's going on and what the conversation is. is Sabria Whitaker, founder of Grow the Game. Sabria, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me and thank you for talking about this as well. Yeah, cool. I'm sorry. Like, I mean, I'm sorry that we have to talk about this. And, you know, Sabria is so knowledgeable about everything, guys, when it comes to the W. So we, of course, want to talk about all the amazing things that are happening in the league, but we do have to address this. So, you know, let's get into it. Um, so Raquana Williams' um, report came out. She was charged. She was arrested and charged. Um, nine charges um, around domestic violence. And for me, it was like a shock. Um, I'm still new to covering this league, but I mean, it was I, it was more of a shock, not because it was domestic violence charge, sadly, but it was a shock to me because of the nature of some of the allegations. Um, and then also, you know, she did have a a, a past domestic violence situation where she was suspended um, for seven games by the league. And so now this is her second occurrence right now, the charges, it's a second um, allegation. So. Sabria, just can you help us break this down, like in terms of, I saw the reaction around the the, the league. I saw um, players tweeting. I saw WNBA Twitter um, tweeting about this, but I'm going to just ask you directly. One of the things when it comes to um, domestic violence between same-sex couples, I know there was like an issue before in the past where like Brittany Griner um, was was accused of something. And I've heard from people, they were like, well, we viewed that as like two women fighting each other. Um, this doesn't feel the same, but can you talk to us about the dynamics at play here? Yeah, um, and I mean, I agree with them, honestly, just from the Brittany Griner situation before that also involved another WNBA player. Um, so that changes things. And like you said, as, as someone that's in that community, as well as someone that is a, a victim of domestic violence, I definitely view them differently. Um, and especially, like you said before, this is the second incident where, you know, this player has been accused of these things. And before it was very similar, right? Arrest on felony charges um, after a violent incident involving a firearm. So I think this situation definitely needs to be handled differently. And from what I saw on WNBA Twitter, there is a call for something to happen. Um, but just like with anything else, the court of public opinion and the court of law are two different courts. And the collective bargaining agreement that the WNBA has is what is going to be considered the governing document on how the team, as well as Commissioner Kathy Engelbart, will respond to these allegations. What I found so interesting, and I'm happy you brought up the CBA, um, especially in addressing this, what I found interesting in reading into this was that previously when Raquana Williams had her incident when she was with the Los Angeles Sparks, uh, the WNBA and the WNBPA, the Players Association, did not have a joint agreement or a joint policy within the CBA. This was in 2019. Um, and it actually prohibited the WNBA from doing anything, um, essentially, and making decisions, right? So it was the Los Angeles Sparks that had to sit her out and versus the WNBPA, excuse me, the WNBA making her sit out. So now, as a result of that, and I don't know how many people know this, but the WNBA and this new CBA started to match what the NBA had did. So the NBA came together with the Players Association and created a domestic 
violence policy that they came together on. And essentially the, the turnout of that was it allowed the NBA to provide administrative leave and separate a player from their team. Whereas before, when this happened with Raquana Williams, she was not separated from her team from the WNBA. It was the team itself that had to make this decision. And so it is interesting to see now the WNBA having a, more power as a result of the CBA to do something. And I know that that's probably what WNBA, uh, WNBA Twitter and what you're talking about, um, Sabria, is like as far as like being able to do something and making a stand on this. But you're right. Raquana Williams is innocent until proven guilty. And so court of law and court of public opinion are two different things. Yeah, one yeah, of the things that I thought, um, or that was different also with this case versus uh, the Brittany Griner um, and Gr Brittany Griner and Glory Johnson case, you know, when it happened was that in that situation, at least the police indicated that they couldn't actually identify um, like that someone was an actual abuser in the situation. Um, and so if they can't say, and it looks like both parties are involved, you know, they charge both parties. Based on the reports right now, it seems cl clear cut that um, Raquana was the abuser, at least that's how she's being charged. So is that the only thing that makes it different in terms of like, this domestic violence case or there, are there any other differences like that we should be aware of that others may not Sabria um well I mean like you said um the reports that I read and the articles that I read it said that the justice of peace Rebecca Sachs noted that the charges here in this case stem from acts that police said occurred over an extended period of time. So I think mm -hmm. that alone, in combination with the fact that this is, um, you know, William's second offense with similar circumstances involving um, an incident with their partner, definitely changes things, um, as well as, you know, the charges themselves, right? Like nine counts, five of which are felony charges. And strangulation is a very serious act like three counts of domestic battery by strangulation speaks to and natalie i know you know just with your legal background as well like that speaks to intent very differently than maybe some other i guess acts that may you know occur in a domestic you know situation like this so i think the strangulation um as another level and just the charges felony charges multiple counts stemming from two to 15 years, depending on the count, plus four misdemeanor charges. This is very serious. And it, it's not the WNBA's first serious um, incident like this, but like you all have been saying, the fact that they have teamed up to create something in the CBA where it's, you know, a, a joint policy on domestic and intimate partner violence, which is even separate from the section on player arrests, I think is going to set a precedent, you know, for this league and hopefully other leagues to follow. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say it, it feels very violent. This, this, um, these charges. And I just, I want to just make clear the reason I, I keep referring back to Brittany Griner, because that's not the only incident. There have been other incidences, as you pointed out, is I saw people tweeting and sort of coming like, oh, you guys want to give Brittany Griner a pass for what happened in the past with her. Um, but they're very different situations. And that's why it's important to understand the facts and circumstances and how they differ. So I, I that's why I'm harping on it. And I just want to make sure that I'm reflecting that that correctly, Sabria. And also, um, this incident allegedly, according to reports, lasted about an hour. Right. And that right. is important as well. Right. I want to, um, I mean, Nat, to go back to your point just now, that's a really great point. Uh, we talked also about like Shamik Holdsclaw and Jennifer Lacey, also two WNBA players. But at the time, Holdsclaw was retired. So there wasn't an impact on her playing career. Um, and, you know, in, in the way that that played out. And I think that that's what's interesting or, or going to be very unique about this situation with Williams is seeing the impact. Sabria, I want to ask you about, again, impact on the ACEs. I feel, and Nat feels this way too, as you can see from, you know, the way that we're looking at this, the ACEs uh, are a walking ju juxtaposition, as Nat put here. 
they have had a perfect season almost on the court. They're having a historic run in the their ability to, to win, play together, uh, and, and, and just play really great basketball on top of having one of the most visible faces uh, of the league. You would imagine that this is a perfect storm for them to be the poster child of the WNBA, yet they started their season with controversy uh, and they continue now with this situation. How does this imp- a situation like this impact, you think, the brand of the Aces, um, but also the team, the players, and, and, and them kind of reconciling with what their teammate have been, has been charged with? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of layers to that as well. So she was already out, I want to say, with a back injury. So That's right. It, it, so it, it's not going to, in my opinion, affect the court play um, yeah, no. so much. As I said, but like you said, they are coming off of a championship season and are trying to go back to back. And everyone talks about how hard it is to go back to back. They've been number one at the standings, but also, like you said, they started the season with controversy. And there were some tweets that like they have been trying to do with the Brittany Griner situation, have been conflating it with, you know, comments aimed at coach Becky Hammond for that other incident involving, you know, former player now LA Sparks player, Dierica Hamby. And, and I think the brand is under a microscope, the way Mm -hmm. that they handle it from players to front offices, to the social media accounts, people are looking at it. And because they're been, you know, they've been on top for the second season in the row and they are the defending champions. They're already essentially looked at as the villain, right? Like people are going to root for the underdog essentially anyway. So people are looking for any reason to, you know, trash or, or put any negativity towards this team. So I think that they have to be really, really careful about the way they handle this, which in my opinion should be very different than the way they handled um, press related to the the Dierica Hamby and Coach Becky Hammond suspension Mm. because that was not talked about enough, in my opinion. So I'm also looking at how national media is going to handle this when we talk about, you know, the halftime shows and WNBA countdown and things like that of how they're going to handle that. I think that's also very important because it's a Las Vegas Aces issue when it comes to the brand as well as the WNBA. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing people call into question their culture. So I think, like you said, their response is going to be really important. Um, And that would, you know, it's not totally them, right? Because the the league is going to like weigh in on this. But um, one, what kind of punishment do you anticipate coming? Um, That's first. And then second, do you think we will see Raquana Williams play again in the WNBA? That is such a complicated question because again going back to the cba it outlines what is to be taken into consideration um and the factors and who the decision maker is and so because of the severity of the situation what we talked about with the strangulation the fact that it's a second offense and felony charges like all of those things and really that only matters if raquana isn't convicted essentially pretty swiftly and then that is no longer a question they're just going to have to serve the sentence um but i do think that it has to be way more than the 10 game suspension from the previous offense um i think it should be about getting help um and not just for her but everyone in the league because you never know what all the players are going through on either end of a situation like this so I'm hoping that it it is one that makes sense. It's one that sets a precedent moving forward. Um, but in my opinion, no, I don't think that we may see her again, just because of the other incidents and how a lot of people felt like it's been swept under the rug and everyone's looking at us and we've set the standard for so many things. I think that is going to be taken into consideration um, as well. I think it's worth saying as and making sure that we call out that the charges that Raquana Williams had in 2019 were dropped in 2020 and that the WNBA cannot impose any sort of punishment for things once they've not been found convicted or or the charges were dropped. So that is why that ultimately ended up playing out that way. Um, But you're right, depending on how this plays out in court, that will ultimately tell us 
you know, the answer there. Um, yeah, this is a very complicated, complicated thing. And just like you said, the WNBA fairly or unfairly being put under a microscope for doing the right thing in these cases uh, is interesting. And last thing I'll say too, the NBA's domestic uh, violence policy does include educational and career, like counseling courses as a part of their, their policy. Uh, the WNBA took that into consideration as well for their new CBA. So that should be hopefully something that's offered to uh, Raquana uh, Williams and others that experience this again. Sabria, thank you for joining us, for your honesty, for your vulnerability. Um, yeah, this one's a hard one to discuss. We appreciate you. Hopefully the next conversation is one that's a, a different tone. Thank you yeah. for joining me again today. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.